Hello, this is the Golden Ribbon with another tutorial. Today we're looking at the Arrow Cycle Infographic. I have my icons on the right hand side. I have my colors also on the right hand side in circles. And two dimensions at the top that we're going to use to help us just to start this graphic. My canvas is 1700 by 1700 with a gentle radial gradient of white to a light gray. Okay, let's get straight into it because we've got a lot to cover. All right, we're going to start with a box. I'm going to use this box size. I'm going to use the bottom dimensions right here, the 210 by 300. So I'm going to put in the 210 by 300. And I think it's this way it's supposed to be actually. So it's 310 by 300 the other way. Just check, I think it's that way. All right then. Then we are going to duplicate this with Control and D, hold Shift and drag it out. About here is good, just put this in a different color just so I can see it. All right. Okay, with that now, we're going to double click it. We see that we have the square nose and the circle. It's still an object controlled by the two control toolbox for the rectangle tool we want to change this into a path we're going to hit control shift and c which is the equivalent of going to path object to path so we want this to be a path now with nodes that we can edit individually so what we're going to do now we're going to make sure that we're in the edit paths option and we're going to drag a box and select these two nodes right here then we're going to go up to my left hand corner, insert a new node and we're going to delete these two nodes that we had selected at first. Oh no, don't delete them. We're going to just select them, hold control and drag them down. Good. Let's drag this down a bit too. It's something that looks like this. Good make sure that everything is it's not rounded we're going to do the same for this control shift and c which is the same thing as up is um up path object to path and then we are going to drag this down to about here let's put this in the same color now i think this is how we're looking good also on these two we're going to stretch it out and push this forward slightly you know, a little bit more forward and then we have our general shape here good next we're going to go to a circle tool and we're going to zoom in create a circle let's actually use it in the outside so that you can actually see it control and shift left mouse button drag out to keep it into a perfect circle let's put it in a light blue so that we can see what we're doing good so what we want now is a circle to touch these line segments right here just want it to be able to touch it so we're going to increase the circle until it touches all of them Alright, and we have, this is looking good, you can hold ALT while we move left and right and that makes smaller increments of movements so that we have a touch on every side as best as we can. We can scale up just a little bit more. And the more you zoom in, the closer the increments become. You won't have to play about with this again, but try and get them as close as we possibly can get them. Okay, that looks really good. And we're gonna duplicate it and carry it down. 
do the same down here. I'm going to duplicate it and carry it across. Do the same right here. And we duplicate with Control and D. I'm going to duplicate one and carry it down here. Making sure it's touching as best as we possibly can. Good. So now with this now, oh, we need one more. That's right, one that comes right here. Right here. Good. So we're going to select the Bezier tool with B, or you can go here and select Bezier. And we're going to draw a box through the spot where the node, where the circle touches the line segments right here or the edge of this shape good then we're going to after we close the box we're going to hold shift select this arrow and we're going to go to path and difference good and then we're going to do the same for this wherever the circle touches the edge or line segments of this box We're going to create a shape, close it with the Bezier tool, hold shift to select both, and we're going to go to path and difference. I'm going to repeat it for this one right here. Once more, path and difference. Good. And up here as well. Try your best to see that the lines go right through where the circle touches it. You know, go path and difference. Or you can path and difference. Or you can just simply go control shift and minus sign. Good. For the last one now, we're going to press B or go to Bezier. We're going to create a line extending from the top down. I'm going to drag the circle out to this line. This is the part that we want. This segment in between the circle, the line, and the box, and the blue arrow. So we're going to drag this up, just gently, making sure it's touching. And then we're going to hit B, click this, so that it extends the bezier. Good. and then we're going to finish the bezier curve up here I'm going to make this blue and push this underneath and get rid of the stroke right wherever it comes out we're going to extend the circle to meet it All right, push the circle to meet it we can hold control while we're moving with the mouse so that we can get the perfect fit then we're going to select this shape that we had made, put the in blue, see it's a different shape, and this one right here, which is the original arrow box, and we're going to go to path and combine them, or you can just hit union. And we go in here, make sure the circle is indeed touching the top of the thing. And I think we've got a bit of a curve up here. Good. And we're going to select the circle now. Shift select the new shape where we combine the two. And we're going to go path and difference. And that gives us that shape. I think some of these nodes are a little bit out. But when you're doing this, you can take your time. I do have to go through because it's not much time for me. But so for all of these now, you're going to hold shift and select them. Press control and we're going to unify all of them. So path union. Then we're going to select. Then we're going to select our end of our arrow and the base box. And we're going to go path and union and lastly 
we're going to unify the circles with the new shape, which is the arrow, and go path and union. And so we have our shape that um, we have our new our shape right here that should um, get it done and if we check it from the original one it should be around the same size we just double check it yeah well, similar it should be all right what we'll do though is that we'll extend it a little further and then we'll just select these nodes and drag it and drag them down just a little bit and get something a bit more similar but yes and you can pretty much do much and bring it out to the same thing here <coughs> but it won't make much of a difference so what we're going to do now that we have our arrow we're going to create a box so I'm going to do that again go to the box tool hold down control and shift left mouse button drag out good and then we're going to give it these dimensions right here and let's go to here 660 by 660 good and then I'm gonna hold shift select the boundary box and we're gonna go to object align and distribute and we're going to center it make sure last selected is selected making sure that we select the blue box and then this gray box so it's aligning the blue box to the gray box and we're going to put it in the center here good then we're going to carry this down lift this over right here and it should come to something like this good all right then so what we're going to do now is that we want another box with the 210 300 dimension which is actually 310 200 310 200 and we're going to click it again activate the rotation handles press control and turn it in increments until it is 90 degrees for a 90 degree rotation then we're going to put this into a different color interesting why I don't have this gray here that's okay put this into a different color and with that different color I'm going to set it and stretch it down using this stretch handle I'm going to duplicate it with Control and D. Activate rotational handles. Press Control to make put it into a 90 degree flip. I'm going to put it here. Duplicate this. Carry it on this side of the of the box. I'm going to duplicate the top one and carry it down using Control to carry it in a straight line. Good. Next, we're going to duplicate this, carry it to the side, and we're going to flip it up here, flipping it along the horizontal axis, and I'm going to flip it along the vertical axis. Good. I'm going to duplicate the two of them now. Hold the rotational handle. Hold Control. So you get in increments and carry it round. So now we have our basic shape. Good. We're gonna get rid of our box, we don't no longer need it. And we notice that we have our edges here extended. I'm 
it's a simple fix we'll switch it over slightly a little bit later okay so we're going to lift this up here same here pull it in good pull it down so that this touches here it's a bit dark let's see if I can brighten it so that you can see exactly what I'm doing I am pulling this edge here so that it touches this brown box good I think that's every single one of them done all right then so now that we have our basic shape we're going to move into the shadows and also the colors so this one I have as orange this one I have as blue this one I have as I think the darker blue good so we're moving to the first primary gradients select the arrow we're going to press G or you can select the gradient right here click from this outer edge hold C control and that keeps it straight and pull out with your left mouse good. left mouse button then you're going to press D for the dropper tool <laughs> and I'm going to select a darker blue right here All right, for the orange it's going to be similar affair apart from that the orange is the dark one so we're going to pull out here from the top so we click and pull out holding control then you're going to press D and select this orange right here. Is that the orange I use? I think so. Yes, I think that's the orange. If it's not the orange, it would be this one. Yeah, this is the orange. I'm going to do so for the blue too. Press G or go to the gradient. Pull out. Select this lighter blue right here. And for this brighter yellow, we have select it. Let's make sure the gradient is selected. Or press G, pull out, and use this browner yellow right here. I think that's how it's done. Yeah. So we have all of these right here. Next, we're going to deal with these corners right here. Let's get a bezier and draw a line that's parallel to this blue arrow we have here. We're going to select the both of them with shift and we're going to go path and difference. Make sure the gray and this is selected, path and difference. Hmm. What am I doing here, wrong here? Make sure that the both of them are selected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, path and difference. I must have not carried it straight across the line. I'm going to do the same with these. Select it using shift, path, and difference. Uh, yep. Select it using these. Path and difference. And lastly, Can even fix this edge to be more rounded but we can do that at the end okay then i've got the basic gradients going on here now we're going to move in the gradients for these gray boxes right here good what i'm going to do here now is that we're going to duplicate these and then we're going to carry it out 
I'm going to duplicate it once more and carry it in. So let's change a different color so we can see what we're doing. We're going to hit Control Shift and left mouse button and pull in to scale it down. Then we're going to bring these handles here, hold Shift and pull it up. So it looks like it's it's a proportional shrink. Let's bring it down slightly more on the side, something like this. Then we are going to hold shift, select the outside box and go to path and difference. Good. Well, just before you do that, let's duplicate this one more box. Duplicate it here put it underneath, let's use a different color like orange and then I'm going to select these two and go path and difference so we have this box which is the outline and we have this box inside here Good. then we're going to lift this box up above the outline move it out a bit well select your outline first no. Lift it above the box, pull it out using control, select your outline, select the orange box. Then you're going to go into undo, which is control and Z to bring it back. And that will see that both are selected. And you're going to right click it, and go to set clip. Good. And what the set clip dub is that now there is an invisible clip around this shape so right here we have it right here above here we're going to bring it below the arrow and we're going to bring it make it a slightly darker shade of this brown right here so i'm going to go to fill bring it down slightly darker good then we're going to go to blur I'm going to lift the blur up a little bit about 7.8 is really good and we notice the blur doesn't go outside of the box and that's because we used the clip earlier so it only goes inside of the box and creates this nice vignetting round uh, boxes so we're going to duplicate it control and D rotate it holding control for increments to 90 degrees and we're going to paste this box in every area where there is a brown you can use alt to while you're moving it to move by the increment so that is inside and you get it perfectly aligned with this gray box Good. drop it underneath good uh, now we're going to make these arrows a bit more shiny and we're going to duplicate one now just extend the shape and intersect good I'm going to carry it down here change it to a different color just for the sake bring it down slightly down like here good I'm going to select a brighter color good and then we're going to duplicate it and do it for the same everywhere around control D to duplicate holding control again to rotate in increments we're going to use a lighter color every time it's a slightly lighter blue here a lighter orange a lighter yellow interesting oh that's the yellow I was supposed to use here I was wondering where that was the yellow and a lighter blue using your fill and stroke okay so we're going to blur them path 
select all of them and we're going to blur them with about a 3.5 hmm, 3.5 blur is about good Good. And also we're going to add an extra shadow to these. And so we're going to create a shape right here. Try and put it in a bit. And you're going to do the same as we did with the arrows, but you're going to use a darker shade. The rotational handles. Duplicate the rotational handles. And duplicate rotational handles use a darker blue use a darker yellow carrying it on the hue saturation and lightness scale and use a darker blue here to access that you go to object fill and stroke option and also use oh did the darker orange already let's select all of them or shift and get rid of the stroke by right clicking on the stroke remove stroke and we're going to reselect every one of them and we're going to blur it too but this blur will be less about a 2.0 blur then we're going to activate our gradient tool and carry it down at an angle so that the gradient is equal gradient carry it down good gradient carry it down and gradient carry it down mm, this one's slightly too dark so gonna shut up a bit good and then you may have to play about with opacity a little bit on this just to make it blend in a bit more it to an 80% or so good all right so us is looking pretty good all right nice so we want a couple of shadows here shadow to go underneath the arrows and shadows to go across so we're going to get our bezier tool and go across the frame right here create a slight curve and close that shape good i want to make sure that we're selecting that box underneath duplicate that box control the both of it um, hold shift to select the both of them path and intersection good i'm going to select a darker brown and duplicate it across the frame holding that control for increment each time rotating it with the select Let's remove the uh, 
stroke and then we can blur that out ever so gently to about a one good and then what we can do is select the one underneath duplicate it select our blur and we're going to set clip because you notice that it's going outside of the edges a bit too much so we're going to duplicate the clip actually right here can even use a gradient slightly to make it feel less harsh of a, of a shadow if you find that your computer is struggling with this moving kind of slow then you can always just go to view display mode no filters and then this will help you to work on it while you are rendering your composition so that you don't have a an issue with your your actual computers not keeping up good and it'll even show you the reach of the blur which is really handy so we're going to duplicate this carry it around and this will be the shadow underneath the arrows good so if you go to filter view display mode normal we see that our arrows have slight shadows we can definitely increase the effect of these shadows a bit and so we have it just going to add on our numbers I think this font is Algria Sans uh -huh. Let's see if we can push them in Sons, and we're going to put this in here and we pretty much have it I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I look at the infographic arrow circle and how to get that lovely gradient you can even go further and add highlights to this really nice how it can come out and you can play about with these blurs to get them to fade in even better but as for now this is complete if you like it give it a thumbs up also if you want to see more tutorials like this you can also comment under the blog and say I'd like to see something like this I'll definitely be doing a tutorial on the origami style icons. I'll probably pick one and just do one. That tie looks good. I'll probably pick the tie. Alright then. 
So unto another tutorial, get up and design a new dawn. Later.